for the slaughter. Nay, and all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Dear Lord, as I come to you this morning, Lord, I pray that you will just clear my mind from all the junk that's in it. Lord, I pray that you would clear my heart from any sin that's in it and wash it in the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. Lord, I pray that you would give me the power of the Holy Spirit this morning, that his work would be done, and Lord, knowing that I cannot do it in my own strength, that Lord, I'm not strong enough, not powerful enough to preach the Word of God, but the Holy Spirit can do the work through me today. Lord, I know it's not by strength and not by power, but, but by my Spirit. Lord, I know that's what you said, and Lord, I pray today that that's what it be. And Lord, if there's any Christian here this morning that is downhearted and weary with uh, the trials and tribulations of life, I pray that you would encourage their heart and strengthen them and heal the wounds, Father. And Lord, if there's any unsaved person here today that's never been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, I pray that <coughs> you, Father, would save their soul from the road to hell today. May that today be the day of their salvation. May they come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior today. Lord, I pray this prayer in Jesus' precious name and for His sake. Amen. Now this morning, uh, the name of my message is, Can a saved person ever be lost? Can a saved person ever be lost? And that I'm going to give you several verses of Scripture, and you want to write them down this morning. But this is a doctrine that's called the milk of the word. And it's a doctrine that's absolute to every Christian. If you're here this morning and you're saved, one thing that you want to get absolute in your life is you want to get down at an absolute fact that a man who's really saved cannot lose his salvation. And in fact, you can tell a whole bunch of folks that are heretics and you can tell a whole bunch of folks that are false prophets in teaching the opposite of this doctrine. Uh, that's the doctrine of eternal security. The doctrine of the one saved, always saved. And uh, of course I want you to look at my verse this morning in Romans chapter 8. And let's start out with verse 38. It says, For I am persuaded, that's one of Paul's favorite, favorite expressions, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord. Then Paul saying, these things cannot separate us from Jesus Christ. And this morning I want to preach on those things. Number one, notice it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, death nor life, two great final states of, of a person. Uh, you know death is a finality and life is an absolute state. You're either absolutely alive or you're absolutely dead, one or the other. And some folks say, well, that fellow is so uh, uh, physically in bad shape that he, have you ever heard the expression, he's got one foot in the grave and the other one on, on a banana peeling, you know? And uh, uh, you say, uh, that's the way it is. No, man, you're either alive or you're either dead. Uh, physically speaking, you're one or the other. And that's an absolute state. And Paul says, uh, death nor life shall separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now you say, how can death separate a man? Now why would a man think that death itself 
would separate him from the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let me give you a perfect example. Let's have a man die. Now, this is just an example to illustrate to you that salvation cannot leave you. Let's have a man die in the worst state that he can die in. Let's take a man and put him in terrible sin. A terrible sin. And let's put him in a sin of the... You know what folks think is a terrible sin nowadays? Sex sins. Amen? Now folks think them are terrible sins. Let's put a man in the terrible sex sin. Let's make him a Christian. Born again. And put him in a terrible sex sin. And then right in the middle of that sin, without him ever confessing that sin... Let's kill him and take him home to heaven. You say, you, who, you mean to tell me he goes home to heaven? What an example. Lot, bless your soul, Amen. Lot died in a sin of incest and never confessed that sin. No words are recorded that Lot confessed his sin of getting drunk and committing incest with his two daughters. And yet the Bible says he went to heaven when he died. But Lot is numbered with the heroes of the faith and Lot is numbered with the saints of God and yet Lot never confessed his sin. You say, you know what unsaved people, you know what a lot of Christians say? They say, well, if you confess your sin, God forgives you. Well, that's right, he does. You say, what if you don't confess it? Then God whips you, but you're still his child. You're still his child, and God will whip you, and will whip you, and will whip you. But you're still a child of God because of a physical birth. Not physical, but a spiritual birth. A death cannot separate you from the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, death nor life can separate you from the Lord Jesus Christ then nothing that's in life can separate you and nothing that's in death can separate you from Jesus Christ. You say, Brother Bemis, why is that a great truth? Well, it's a great truth because of this. No man can really go and tell anybody that he knows he's going to heaven unless he believes in eternal security. Where are you going when you die? You say, well... Uh, I hope I'm going to heaven. If you don't believe in eternal security, you are hope you're going to heaven. You cannot know for certain that you're going to heaven when you die unless you believe in the eternal security of the believer. You did just hope so. I ask folks all the time, where are you going when you die? Oh, I hope I go to heaven. I met some Christians like that. The other day I had a guy come up here on the side of the church like this and pulled up and I'm always praying, Lord, send them by to me, you know, send them by. I'm always going out and getting them, you know. And I'm going out and getting them by the scores, and I say, Lord, send them by. And he does. He sends them by to me. And I was out here, and this guy pulls up in this pickup, you know. And he pulls up there, and I say, oh, Lord, thank you. <laughs> and I'm, you know, of course, I don't just jump on them you know, like that, you know. Sometimes I do, but... <laughs> Uh, lots of times I don't, you know. I just come in real cool on the backside of him, you know. And I just I talk to this guy along. He's selling me a little old thing, round thing, for the pump on my well, and telling me how it works, you know. And I'm listening all ears, you know, and listening to that thing. And I'm thinking, now, how can I get into him, Lord? How can I get it? Oh, Lord, give me an open door. Lord, get, get me in there. Lord, get me in there. Get me in there. And he keeps talking about this water, you know, the water and the water and the water and the water. You know where I'm going, don't you? The water and the water and the water. In my mind just saying, the water of life, the water of life, the water of life, the water of life. And I'm saying, I'm said that, he said, that'll do this and that'll do this and that'll do this and this and this to the water and this and this. And I, say, Have you, and I said to him, he stopped there and I said, let me ask you a personal question. He says, go ahead. And I said, you talking about this water, I got some water that you can drink of and you'll never thirst again. And he said, he looked at me like that a while. You know, like, like he's about ready to fall out of his pickup, you know. And I said, uh, let me ask you, if you died right now, do you know you'd go right straight to heaven? 
And he looked at me and said, well, I hope so. <laughs> you know? And then I, you know, sometimes you, you, you get a little shaky. You say, well, this guy, he's been, he not been cussing. He hadn't been swearing. And he hadn't been talking sideways. And uh, so just maybe he might be saved. So I said to him, I said, uh, let me ask you this then. Have you ever got on your hands and knees and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? He says, oh yes, I've done that. Then I said, how come you don't know you're going to heaven? And he said, well, well I hope so. And then I took him to 1 John. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 John. Turn to 1 John. Now, if you don't believe in eternal security, you cannot know that you're going to heaven. 1 John chapter 5 and verse uh, 12 and 13. Now, let's read it. 1 John 5, 12 and 13. <coughs> and this is what I said to that man. He that hath the Son hath life. I mean, I said to this man, I said, do you have the Son? He said, yes, I do. I said, when did you receive him? He said, such and such a date. And I said, where was that at? He said, it was up here in Great Falls in Pastor Warner's church. All right. Amen. That's what he said. I believe that. And it said, uh, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Verse 13 says, these things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life. That you may know that you have eternal life. It did not say hope that you have eternal life. Or maybe you have eternal life. Or perhaps you have eternal life. But you may know. K-N-O-W. You say why is that important? Because man I don't want to go to heaven on a hope so. I want to go to heaven on a no so. Don't, tell, don't say yeah I'm going to heaven on a no so. I mean K-N-O-W, not N-O. <laughs> I mean, I know where I'm going when I die. You say, why? Because of what I'm trusting in to get me to heaven. Because of what I'm trusting in. I'm trusting in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said to that man, I said, you trusting in blood? He said, yep, preacher, I am. I said, then you ought to know that you're going to heaven. And he looked at me, and then I said, look at that Bible. I said, do you believe the Bible? He said, yes, I do. And he looked at the Bible. And I said, did God say you know it? He looked at it. He looked at me. He looked at that. And then he looked at me. And I said, did God say you know it? He said, yeah, God said I know it. And I said, then did you, do you know it? He looked at the Bible and said, yeah, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and brother, I'll tell you the same thing this morning. If you don't believe in eternal security of the believer, you can't know that you're going to heaven. You just hope it. You just hope it. And I say to you this morning, neither death nor life shall separate you from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why I know I'm going to heaven? Because Jesus Christ knows me. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Now write this verse down. Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. And Matthew chapter 7. Look at verse 23, Matthew 7, 23, and it says, And then will I... No, let's, I skipped one. I want Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. That's the one I want. I want to read it first. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not every man that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. It's God's will that you get saved. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? They prophesied in the name of, of Jesus Christ. And in thy name have cast out devils. They cast out the devils in the name of Jesus Christ. And in thy name have done many f wonderful works. They've done them. Then they've done many wonderful works. They prophesied in his name. And they cast out devils in his name. You'd say, boy, those folks must be saved. But... Verse 23 says, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Now you know some he said, well, look at the word never. 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 
God can't say that to me because He knows me. Amen? Lord? He knows me. And if He can say on the day of judgment, I never knew you, Nathan, He would have to be lying because He does know me. And He can never say to me, He never knew me because He knows me. Now, He may say a lot of other things to me. <laughs> but He ain't going to say He never knew me. Never knew me. You say, what is that? That's eternal security of the believer. You say, won't you get awful bold and awful brass? And won't you go out and live in sin? And won't you just go out and sin and get away with it? Absolutely not. Anybody that does that would be a first class fool. Because number one, I love Jesus Christ. And I want to please Him. I may make a stupid mistake. I may make a dumb mistake. And I may get very selfish and look out for myself and get very close to sin. But in my heart, brother, there's always a hatred for it. I may tell a lie. I may. <laughs> Probably will. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. In my heart, I say, Lord, help me not to tell a lie. In my heart, I say, Lord, I hate it. Lord, never let it come to my lips. It may come there. And it probably will. Some of you probably caught me. <laughs> but I tell you, brethren, in my heart and in my mind and in my soul, I say, Lord, never, 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 never let it come to me. That's my attitude towards sin. Or it comes. But I never get to the place where I go against God and, and enjoy it. I may go against Him. And I may rebel and just forget about it and just love the world and go back out in the world and head the way of the world. But down inside my heart and down inside your heart, if you're a child of God, to be something down in there to say, you're not happy, 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 you're not happy. And you won't be happy. You may go the way of the world and go out that way and run that way and go that way. But you can't enjoy it anymore. You know what Christianity does for you? It wrecks sin for you. It wrecks the bar hall for you. It wrecks smoking and lying for you. I didn't say you never done it. I just said it wrecks it for you. You can't enjoy it anymore. As an unsaved man, I used to cuss. I used to drink. I used to do all kinds of things that I wouldn't name to you. And it didn't bother me a bit. I thought I enjoyed it. But when I go along those lines nowadays, you know what happens? Something inside of me just kills me. Something just kills me. You say, what is it? I'll tell you what it is. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's like this. Nor death, nor life shall separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. All right, turn to John chapter 10. Turn to John chapter 10. And in John chapter 10, uh, let's look at verse uh, 27. Now I want you to get this verse. John, turn to the gospel. The gospel of John. John chapter 10, and let's read verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. For my Father which gives them uh, me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then you know what he said? He said, you're in the hand of God. And no man is able to pluck you out. And you're secure and you're secure for eternity. You know what that is? That's eternal security. No man. It said no man. Does no man include me? Does no man include you? No man's everybody. Then your mother can't take you out. Your father can't take you out. Your sisters and brothers can't take you out. And nobody can take you out. I'll tell you something even better than that. I'm not only in the hand of God. I'm part of His hand. The Bible says they were bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh in Ephesians chapter 5 and 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12 
It says we become the, uh, the thumb and the eye and the hands and the feet. It says we become the body of Christ. Then if a man could lose his salvation, part of the body of Christ would have to go to hell. Now come on, cut his hand off and put it in hell. Christ's body. Because I'm part of his body. I'm part of it. All right, again, take your Bibles and notice in Romans it says, And I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, angels nor principalities nor powers. That's three great spiritual forces. That's angels, principalities, and powers. All three of them are spiritual forces. Now those things, angels, now what would a good angel want to take you out of Christ for? A good angel wouldn't want to do it. What would an evil angel want to do it for? He might have all kinds of reasons. But an angel could kill 180,000 men in one night. One angel could. An angel has the power to kill an old army. One angel. And yet that angel doesn't have the power to take you out of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you are secure in him. It says, No angels, nor principalities, nor powers. Now what is that? That is this. Take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 12. Turn to the verse. It says, Principalities. Ephesians chapter 6. And let's look at verse 12. Ephesians 6, 12 says... For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now turn to Daniel chapter 10, verse 20. The book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 10, and look at verse 20. Ezekiel, Daniel. Daniel 10, 20. And that says... Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? Now will I return to fight against the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Greece shall come. Then you know what that principality is? That is a prince of the devil that's in high places. You know what it is? Spiritual wickedness. You know what it is? It's a, we call it demons, but it's not demons, it's devils that are in this world today. You say, explain it. Suppose a Christian starts messing around with the occults of devils that are in around places. And he starts messing with the Ouija board and starts messing with the seance and starts messing with those things and he gets demon-possessed. And he gets a devil. And the devil comes in him and takes over his body. You say, what happens then? Nothing happens. Not as far as his eternal security concerned. Because you may lose a lot of things as a Christian, but you can never lose your soul salvation. You can lose your joy. You can lose the joy of your salvation. You can lose the assurance of your salvation. You can lose your health. You can lose your millennial reign. You can lose your reward. You can lose a lot of things, but you can never lose your soul's salvation. You say, Brother Bemis, how does it work? How can a man have a demon and still be saved? And still be a child of God? All right. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. And look at verse uh, 11. Colossians 2.11. Now look at the verse. Colossians 2.11. And it says, In whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now notice it says, In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Put off the body of the sins. You know when I sin, you know who sins? My body sins. That's who sins. But you say, you say, so what if your body sins? 
then you're not accountable for it. Well, wait a minute. You have control of what your body does, and you're supposed to give account. The Bible says every man should give account of those things done in his body, whether it be good or evil. Then when your body does wrong, you sin, you have control of it, you have to give account of that sin. But you have to give account of it at the judgment seat of Christ. And it's not a matter of heaven and hell. Let me give you an example. One time, a lady came to me, and she said, Pastor Bemos, when Christ died for my sins, didn't she die for my sins all the way up to the time I got saved? And then she died for all my sins before I got saved? And then after I got saved, he didn't die for my sins after just the once until I got saved? Not the way she thought it was. She thought, well, Christ died for all my sins, just the ones I had right up till the day I got saved, but not the ones after I got saved. And I said to this woman, I said to her, I said, uh, when did Jesus die for your sins? She said, what does that have to do with anything? And I said, well, where was your sins at when he died for them? She said, well, I hadn't committed any yet. And I said, were all your sins future when he died for them? She said, oh, I see, I see, I see. All of her sins were future when Jesus Christ died for them. The ones that she committed before and the ones that she committed after, all of her sins were future when he died for them. Brother, you say what? Christ died for all your sins. The ones before you got saved and the ones after you got saved. You say, well, then I can do anything I want. See, that's the trick to it. The trick is Christ died for those sins and heaven and hell is no more the judgment on the sin any longer. Then it's a matter of fellowship. A Christian does not backslide. A Christian gets out of fellowship. That's what he does. And sin gets you out of that fellowship. You get out of fellowship. You don't backslide. We say backslidden. We call it backslidden. But technically, that's an Old Testament term that's aimed at an Old Testament saint. Christians get out of fellowship with the sin. They get in and get out. You know, some Christians get out of fellowship from day to day. They get out of fellowship from day to day. I've seen some Christians be in some fellowship with the Lord. They're just in sweet fellowship with the Lord and everything's going real good. And then I've seen them two weeks later. They were so out of fellowship, it was pitiful. You say in two weeks? In two weeks you can fall in love with the world and run after the world with such zeal and, and effort that you can get completely out of fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. In two weeks. Now you might not have done that a hundred years ago or two hundred years ago, but brother, you can do it today. You can do it today. The eternal security of the believer. And it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers. And it says, Nor things present nor things to come. Things present, that's the things that are going on right now, nor things to come. What is it? That's two absolute state of time. Things present, that's right here, right now. And things to come, that's anything that will come in the future. Anything that's up ahead of me. Nothing up ahead of me is going to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And I know that he's going to get me to heaven when I die. You know what they say out in the world? I mean, unsay, I mean, say folks that don't believe in eternal security. You know what they say? They say going to heaven is like riding a bicycle. They say you get on that bicycle and you ride that bicycle. And if your bicycle falls over, then you go to hell. Well, I'll tell you something. Oh, they, they do this. That's one illustration they give. Another illustration they say is going to heaven is like climbing a ladder. And you climb up this ladder and you climb up this ladder. And if you miss a, a wrong in the ladder, and you fall off the ladder. And you end up in hell. And I've, give, I've heard they can give both illustrations. Now, you know what's wrong with both of those illustrations? Neither one of them is a Bible illustration. I'll tell you something else about both those illustrations. Both those illustrations would say you could work your way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. Works is not involved in your salvation. Salvation is a gift from God. When Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, that's all it takes to get me to heaven. There's no more to it. Is it Jesus' death on the cross plus something? Or is it Jesus Christ's death on the cross, period? It's Jesus Christ's death on the cross, period. And when you don't believe in eternal security, you know something? You don't even understand salvation, right? 
You might be saved. No, don't misunderstand me. You might be saved and you might be going to heaven, but you don't quite understand salvation right, brother. Because that thing is a work that's secure and done and finished and you don't have to add anything to it. You say, you know, they always accuse me of saying, well, you Baptists say, well, you can just go out and live any old way you want to live then. No. No, you can't live any old way you want to live and get away with it. You'll sin and God will punish you for it and God will whip you for it and God won't let you sin any sin and get away with it. There's no such thing. Any man that says, now I'm saved and I'm secure and I've got eternal life, now I can just go, you can just do anything you want to do. You know what you do? You make a liar out of God. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. And the Bible says, every man shall stand before God and give an account of himself. You can't just go out and sin any way you want to get away with it. God will come down on you hard, brother. And in fact, you know what I believe? I believe God Almighty will come down on you harder if you're a saved man and sin than if you're an unsaved man and sin. Now, you know, so an unsaved man, he can go out and commit adultery and get away with it. You say, why? Because he's going to hell. Because he's going to hell. God just lets him slide. Till hell comes. Not a saved man. Not a saved man. Man, in 24 hours, that Holy Spirit grieves your heart and grieves you. And the Holy Spirit puts a burden on you where if you don't confess that sin and put it under, you can't hardly stand yourself. Amen? You say, what is that? I'll say, you can't sin and get away with it. No Baptist preacher has ever taught that if he's a Baptist preacher unless he's some heretic somewhere. All right? Another reason why I say no things present nor things to come. You know what that deals with? That deals with time. That deals with time. Take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 3, verse 14. John chapter 3, verse 14. John chapter 3 and verse 14 says, John 3, 14 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whosoever believeth on him shall not perish. Shall not perish. Shall not perish. But have eternal life. Have eternal life. Now you know what it means, have eternal life? It means right now. It's a possession that I have right now, eternal life. What is eternal life? It's eternal life. It lasts forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I'll never die. You mean to tell me, you know what I said one time to a lady? I have one of those ladies in my church that don't believe in, in eternal security of the believer, and she sat right back there. Oh, she was a sweet, loving Christian. She is saved. She always, I'm not pointing to anybody in particular now. That's each empty this morning. <laughs> and she sat right back there. And, uh, uh, I said to her one Sunday morning, I said, uh, I said, you don't believe in eternal security. Of course, I looked out like this, you know. I didn't look right at her, you know. <laughs> I was easy on her. And I said, you don't believe in eternal security. And I looked back there and she going, <laughs> like that, you know. And I said, does the Bible say you must be born again? She said, like that so nobody would see her, you know. And then I said, did the Bible say you must be born again and 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 again? And her eyes went like that. You know? And I saw that got home to her. And you know something? If you could lose your salvation, you'd have to be born again and 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 again. The Bible says you must be born again. That means one time you have to be born, man. You had a physical birth, you have to have a spiritual birth. You can't have two births, you can only have one birth. That's a spiritual birth. You've already had the physical birth. And you'll never die spiritually. That's eternal life. You know, I, I used to be a Methodist. Bless their hearts. 
And I went to the Methodist church every Sunday. And the Methodists don't believe in eternal security. And I was going to, I would go to that Methodist church and I would say to the preacher, how can you lose your salvation if you had nothing to do with getting your salvation? How come there's nothing, there's something you can do to lose it if you have nothing to do with getting it? How come there's, you had something to do? And those guys never could answer me. And that thing bothered me and I, every, every time I went to that Methodist church, I said, they don't believe in eternal security. And I thought, well, I don't either, I guess. And I went to them and went to them and went to them and went to them. And then finally, I took my Bible and I went through my Bible and wrote down, not this Bible here, it wasn't a big one, it was an old school field. And I took that old school field Bible and I wrote the word eternal life in it because it was in, in the Bible. I wrote eternal life up there. And then I went through the Bible and everywhere I could find eternal life, I wrote the cross references underneath of it. Not write eternal life and then John John uh, uh, ten twenty eight and John five twenty four and and such and such right on down through there and write about ten cross references right underneath that. And I was in the Navy and I was still going to that Methodist church. And one day we were sitting around the coffee pot. You know how they do in the Navy? They all got a coffee pot and that finger out that looks like they walk around with a finger like this all the time. Those guys in the Navy do. <laughs> And I drink coffee like it's coming out your ears. Man, they have coffee pots like that, big old things like that in the name. All over that ship. And I'd get in there and I'd try to drink coffee with them. And there were about 15 of us in there one day and they was all drinking coffee. And I had my Bible there. And I put my Bible up there like that. And one of those unsaved fellows, we got to talking about religion. And one of them old unsaved fellows walked over there and flipped my Bible open. It's on the front cover, just flip back the front cover. And he looked in there and saw those two words, eternal life. And he started laughing. And he said to all the other unsaved guys, he said, Ah, ha, ha, that Nathan believes in eternal security. He believes in once saved, always saved. I know he does because look what he's got in his Bible. He's got eternal life written right there. And he made fun of me and laughed at me. And in that, at that very second, the Holy Spirit said, and when the Holy Spirit said that to me, I took my Bible and closed my Bible and walked out in a gun deck and said, Lord, I'm getting out of the Methodist church. And I'm going to start believing eternal security of the believer. And Lord, you said eternal life, and you said eternal life, and Lord, I'm going to believe eternal life. And I'll tell you something, God give me assurance of my salvation. He give me assurance of it. And he let me know that I was saved right there on that gun deck. And I'll tell you something, brethren, if you don't believe in eternal security, you can't witness for Jesus Christ. You can't witness for him. You go around talking to folks about the Lord and talking to folks about the Lord and you got to hope so and you hope they'll make it and they might make it and what you tell them might get them to heaven and might not get them to heaven. What are you talking about, fella? You know, when I tell a man something about Jesus Christ, death and the cross of Calvary, I don't have to tell him maybe it'll get him there and maybe it won't. I can tell him positively, I guarantee it get you there. It'll get you there. And if you don't believe in eternal security, you can't tell him that. You can't tell him that. Turn to Hebrews 13, 5. Turn to Ch Hebrews chapter 13. Now look at verse 5. Is Jesus Christ a liar? Let me ask you. Is Jesus Christ a liar? Would he ever lie? Okay. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says... Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Woo-wee! I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now are you going to believe him or are you not going to believe him? Are you going to go by your feelings instead of by what he said? You know what it is? 
If folks feel saved and they feel lost, so they think they're lost because they feel lost. And they feel saved, so they think they're saved and they feel lost, so they think they're lost. And they go by just how they feel. Well, if that's the case, brother, when you get out in the rain and you lose your job and your wife gets mad at you, you could feel lost about twice a week. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Or when your husband gets mad at you and comes in and says, Ah, yuck, this day food tastes terrible. I never say that. I never make that mistake. <laughs> or your wife, you have a big fight about money with her. She wants to spend the money here and you want to spend the money there and you fight about it. That's usually what folks fight about. Or you're fighting about the mother-in-law or the father-in-law or the relatives or the sister or the brother. And, oh, your mother-in-law. Oh, your daddy. Ooh, big old fight, you know. You love your mama better than you do me. Or you love your body, daddy better than you do me. Nah. You know something? You think you lose your salvation all the time. Right. <laughs> Amen. 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 And you know those folks who believe they lose their salvation? That's just what happens to them. That's just what happens to it. Or they go over the other day and teach sanctification and that you're sanctified and you can't sin. And then you get all messed up too because then you ain't confessing your sins and you ain't right with God and then God will make you sick, sick and then it'll start whipping you. You talk about a mess. Yeah, I'll tell you what it's like. Every month or every two months I have this holiness Pentecostal speaking in tongues fellow that I know that's saved. I believe he's saved. And I meet him down here at the auction. And he'll be in the auction down there and he'll be in there. He goes down there quite often. I go down there too. And I go in there and the first thing I always say to him is I say, are you still saved, John? <laughs> and boy, you ought to see the look he gives me. <laughs> I did that about five times, you know. And the first time I had done it, and he, his mouth dropped open like this. And, yeah, yeah, I'm still saved. <laughs> you know. And then after a while, after I'd hit him about 15 or 15 times on it, you know. Are you still saved, John? He'd, he'd say, yeah, I'm saved. Thank you, right? Go the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, go on. But you know something? If you believe your salvation, that would be a good question to ask a man, you know, if you believe you could lose it. After four or five years, say, are you still saved? Are you still saved? You don't have to ask me that question, brother. I mean, I may be out of fellowship and I may get lose my joy and I may lose my house and I may lose my rewards and I may lose a thousand other things. But I know there's one thing I'm never going to lose because he said, I'll never leave thee and I'll never forsake thee. All right? It says, nor height, nor depth. Nor height, nor depth. You know what that height is? That height is all the way up. Go right straight up. You know how that depth is? That depth is as down as far as you go. Now how high can you go? You get in a plane, you can go up as far as the sky. You come back down, you go out here to one of these places, and you get in a rocket, you climb up in that rocket, and you get in that rocket, and you say, blow it out, and blow me out past the moon. Come back. And they put you in a bigger rocket and give you more power and blow you out past Venus. You say, that ain't far enough. So you come back and get in another one. And you get one and you blow you, blow out to the farthest part of the universe you can go. And you say, now I'm away from God. You haven't began yet. You say, I'll go down as far as I can go. You go down as far as you can go. You go all the way to the bottom and as low as hell you could get. You wouldn't be away from God. You couldn't. There's no place in the universe can you run from it. Nowhere in the universe can you run from it. You say, hi, no net. Anything up there, nothing down there is going to separate me from the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing is going to separate it. And last of all, it said, in case he missed anything, the apostle said, nor any other creature. He said, man, I got all these things. I got the height, the depth, the life, the time. I got everything there was. 
but just in case I miss anything, nor any other creature. Now, you know what they all say to me? They say, well, the devil can't take it away, and the angels can't take it away, and nobody else can take it away, but I can take it away myself. Turn to, uh, turn to, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. The Bible says in John chapter 14 verse 16, And it said the Holy Spirit, and He shall abide with you forever. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 chapter 13 says, 2 Timothy 2 13 says, If we believe not, Yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Notice it said, if we, that's a saved person, we, if we believe not, that means if a Christian stops believing in Jesus Christ. Now does believing in Jesus Christ save you? If you believe in the death of Jesus Christ and believe in his death, will that save you from hell? Yes, it will. Suppose you stop believing in that. You say, I don't believe. In your head, you stop believing in Jesus Christ. In your heart, you stop believing in Jesus Christ. And you don't believe in him anymore. What did the text say? Yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. See? You say, why did he say that? Because in the verse in front of it, he said, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Deny us what? Deny you a reign. You can lose a physical reign on the earth. And you can lose a millennial reign with him. But you can't lose your salvation. So in verse 13, he knew some folks would try to interpret verse 12. is thinking you could lose your salvation. So in verse 13, he secured to you that he's not talking about salvation that you lose. He's talking about the reign that you lose. Talking about the reign. Now I want to get secure one thing in your heart and mind. If you've really been saved and you've really accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you cannot lose your salvation of your soul in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you can lose other things. You can lose the joy of your salvation. Now it would be a terrible thing to lose. And some Christians lose it. You can lose the assurance of that salvation. And some Christians lose that. And you can lose many things as a Christian. You can lose your testimony. And some Christians lose that. You can lose your rewards. There's many things you can lose. But you can never lose your soul salvation. All eyes closed and all heads bowed this morning. All eyes closed and all heads bowed this morning. You say, Brother Bemis, why do you preach on that? Because there's people that's going to try to talk you out of your salvation. They're going to try to talk you out of it. And come along to you. And try to talk you out of your salvation. And the devil will try to talk you out of your salvation. The devil will come along and see you in a sin. And see you in a sin somewhere. And catch you in it and see there, see there, you're not saved. You're not saved, you're not saved, you couldn't be saved. You've lost it. Try to talk you out of it. And I say this morning, now if you've really been saved, now, now there's some folks that haven't really been saved. You can come down the aisle and you can shake the preacher's hand and you can pray and you can do that, but if you've never really been saved, it don't make any difference, it don't make any difference anyway. You're going to hell anyway. Now if you've really been saved, now that's what I'm that's who I'm talking to this morning. Now if you've really been saved and you know that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you know that He's your Lord and Savior, then you can't lose it. Because you've got Him. It's not an it, it's Him. Jesus Christ. He will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But if you do not have him, I beg you this morning, turn from your sins and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Is there anyone in the congregation this morning who says, Preacher, I've never been saved. I don't believe I have. 
Not really. Don't believe I've really been shaved. I want you to pray for me. Would you raise your hand this morning and say, Preacher, pray for me. I don't believe that I've really been saved. Pray for me. Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else this morning say, Preacher, I don't believe that I've really been saved, but I want to be. Pray for me. Is there anybody else in the congregation at all this morning? Is there any Christians here this morning say, Preacher, I know that I've been saved. The devil's making me doubt my salvation. Now I want you to pray for me. Would you raise your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you this morning. Several hands. Heavenly Father, as I come before the throne of grace this morning, Lord, I pray, first of all, for these Christians. They know they've received Jesus Christ, but the devil has a great power. Lord, he has a great influence. Lord, I pray that you'd overrule his influence. And Lord, I pray that you'd help these Christians this morning to get back in the Word of God and start believing the verses of Scripture on eternal security. And Lord, I pray that you would give them that. No, they're not to trust in a feeling, Lord. And Lord, I'm not asking that you give them a feeling. But Lord, I pray that you'd give them more faith that they'll believe the Word of God and that they'll claim that promise and stand on the promise of the Word, Father, and give them that assurance, Father. Lord, anything, whatever that thing is that's causing that devil to have the victory in their hearts and in their lives, I pray that you would overrule it even today, Father. Lord, help them to believe the Word and get that great assurance from the Word of God. And Lord, this soul that raised their hand for salvation this morning, I pray today would be their day of their salvation. I pray that you would help them to see their own sinfulness. Lord, help them to see their condition is without hope, without, uh, without opportunity, and without chance, unless they repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd save them today, Father. Pray that they would see their great need and turn and turn to Jesus Christ today. In Jesus' name I pray, and for his sake. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand that you're singing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Just as Christians praying this morning. Now you can get saved this morning. You can accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You say, Preacher, what do I have to do? You have to admit that you're a sinner. And you have to admit that you can't save yourself. You're not good enough. You'll never be good enough. You can't save yourself. You have to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross of Calvary. And that He will save you. Now you say, what do I have to do? You have to accept Him as your Savior. If you'll turn from your sin and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, He'll save you today. You say, you mean to tell me I can get saved today? You get saved today. I mean, saved from hell. I mean, saved from hell. Your sins are taking you to hell. That's where they're taking you. You're going to go to hell. You say, you mean to tell me I'm going to? Yes, you're going to hell. But you don't have to go. You don't have to go. Jesus Christ is paid for your sins. They're all paid for. If you'll accept the payment. Now, the, the invitation is this. If you will accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you step out of your seat and come and let, let one of us show you how from the Bible, how you can be saved. If you will just now accept Christ as your Savior, would you step out of your seat and come on this next stand? That's the invitation. If you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, will you just step out of that seat and come on this next stand as we sing? 